Uh, just gonna jump in here and share a throwback Thursday for you. Um, you know, we, all of us who, well, maybe not all of us, but most of us who watch my videos at least and, and the other videos along this line, uh, we're all riders. You know, we've been on bikes before. We, we know the danger, inherent dangers. We know that anything can happen. That person could change their mind real quick and come out. That person could slam on the brakes and this one could get in my way and the person behind me could not see it and stop in time and kill me from behind. Uh, I don't think about all this stuff. I just point it out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether I don't think I'm gonna die on a motorcycle or whether I just don't care anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm so old, I just don't care anymore. But I don't think that's the case. But uh, I thought I'd tell you uh, uh, some story, you know, a couple of real quick stories. Uh, a couple of the things that have happened to me in life. Uh, the, one of the first things that I remember getting hurt, uh, you certainly couldn't see it unless I uh, pull my upper lip back for you. But uh, when I was a kid, I want to say, I think my mom or dad said I was three or four years old. Uh, you remember the old Coke bottles, the real heavy, the little short, heavy Coke bottles, you know, uh, made out of glass that you were that were returnable. I, I, I'm sure most of you guys have seen them. Uh, I don't think they sell them anymore, but uh, you can uh, certainly uh, you can certainly see an old one somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? It's the traditional Coke bottle uh, that was invented so many years ago. Um, I was walking as a kid. I was walking up some some steps at the house going up from the uh, from the driveway up into the back porch and we had some some two steps that were made and a brick patio and for some reason I stumbled and I was drinking the coke at the time and I held it up and lifted you know lifted it up in front you know and when I hit the ground I went fell down face first when I hit the ground the coke bottle shattered and fortunately, you know, well, they were my kid teeth anyway, so it wouldn't have been a problem there, but uh, fortunately it didn't cut, break any teeth out, but it cut my lip underneath my lip very severely. It didn't cut it all the way through, but it cut it pretty bad right there where the lip and the gum joins together. And I bled like a stuck pig, they told me. Now I have a memory of having the bottle and going up the step. But I don't have any actual memory of the pain or the blood or being, you know, anything like that. But uh, my folks grabbed me real quick and hauled me to a doctor. Now this, they didn't take me to an emergency room. They got to remember this is in the 50s. And we had a doctor who lived close by in the neighborhood and they took me real quick to his house. And uh, he stitched me up right there on his kitchen table. And my folks held me down and uh, he, uh, he stitched up my bleeding lip and uh, gave me something for the pain and whatever you can give a three or four year old back then. And uh, that's all I remember of it. Now I don't have any lasting injury. There is a very faint scar up underneath my lip, which if I pull it back, I can, I can still see. Um, that one didn't almost kill me. Uh, got pushed into a counter one time in third grade, uh, you know, a, a counter in the edge of the room and split my head open and bled like a pig. But again, that was just a bleeder. It didn't really almost kill me. The closest I've ever come to, uh, to getting killed uh, was probably, well, I had two occasions. Um, I had was in an automobile accident in my uh, I guess I was 19, might have, might have been, well, I think I was 19, I don't think I was quite 20, I was off at school, and uh, coming back, and my, my grandfather and I had a wreck, a lady hit his head on, and I ended up with uh, uh, compression wounds on my legs, I didn't break any bones, but I was, I was wrapped up in the car, basically, they had to cut me out of the car, had a real bad concussion, and I was pretty much in and out of consciousness for most of the week after that, but I pretty much recovered uh, to, uh, you know, to, to having no problems. I still have scars on my legs from that, but uh, 
Also one that, uh, the, the one that I think that I came the closest to was uh, on a motorcycle. Uh, I wasn't on a street bike, I was racing motocross. And I wasn't very good at it, I was actually pretty new at it. And I got real excited because I had passed a guy that I was wanting to pass on a straightaway. At the end of the long straightaway was an anthill. You know what an anthill is, it's just a, it's just a hill. Uh, this hill was probably 10 or 15 feet high and the land dropped away from it on the back side of it. It was actually part of an old dirt racing track for cars that we were using uh, for a motocross track. This was a real event that I was in. Had to pay good, had to pay money to even race in it. And uh, I got real excited and quite frankly, I forgot to let off the throttle when I hit the bottom of that hill. I pretty much launched off of there like a Saturn V rocket. I mean to tell you, I went up in the air and I think you know, it would have had to been, it would have had to been, I, I bet my head was at least 25 feet off the ground at one point. Uh, and I over-rotated and when I came down, I landed on my head and my right shoulder. And that's what should have killed me. I should have broken my neck. If my head had been in any different position, and my shoulder, probably if my shoulder hadn't hit the same time my head did, uh, I would have, uh, I think I would have broken my neck and it would have killed me right then and there. Or at the very least I would have been, I'd have been paralyzed for the rest of my life. Uh, this was when I was uh, about 20, 26, 27 maybe. And uh, broke my, shat it didn't break my collarbone, I shattered my collarbone. Uh, into, into, oh I don't know, 10 or 15 individual pieces. Uh, fortunately, they were connected on one end. Most of them were still connected, at least at one end. And uh, it all did heal back after I had to have an operation on and all that. Another major concussion, uh, in and out for a couple of days. I don't remember a whole lot of it, but uh, as far as on the street bike, so far, knock on wood, plastic helmet over a wooden head. Uh, I haven't had a what I would call a close enough call that I was in risk of getting killed. I've almost run off the road at speed. I've had people come at me head on and from behind and on the side, but in reality, either I had an out and took it, or at the last minute they stopped or moved or corrected their line, or I was able to make the corner. Then it turned out to be a non-event. Um, so really, I, with the exception of the one going off the anthill racing, which I don't do anymore, I've been safer on the bike than I have been on, on about anything else. So, anyway, just thought I'd share that with you for a throwback Thursday. Um, I don't dwell on death, even though death is probably sneaking up on me as we speak, being an old senior retired guy now. But uh, not going to worry about it. As long as I got this bike to ride and a lovely woman who's working <laughs> for so I don't have to. Hey, I got it made here. I don't want to go anywhere. Hey, you guys take care. We'll see you later.